Welcome to That Kind of Nerds Podcast, a weekly show where we break down what is going on in the nerdy world. I am CJ Mellon, joined, of course, by Joshua Burns and Brian Thornton. I'm back! <laughs> you didn't go anywhere. Josh wasn't here last episode. That's not the right thing uh, to do. Oh my god, I, I, the air is so thin up here, it hurts my asthma. What is, what is happening? We've lost control that's only 48 seconds into this thing. <laughs> So just as a point of order before we start the show, we are not going to be talking about Fantastic Beasts and where to find them this episode, so if you're worried about that, you're okay, you're in the clear. So a little bit of follow-up before we get too far into this episode. Uh, On the Doctor Strange spoiler cast, uh, I had asked Papa Thornton his opinions on the movie, knowing that he was a a big Doctor Strange fan, and uh, he was gracious enough to send a text message, so I figured who better to read it than his own flesh and blood? Flesh and blood, Murray. Blood and flesh. (laughs) <laughs> go ahead brian go ahead I, w- I would like to hear what papa thornton had to say uh flesh and blood reading starting now pop- Th- papa thornton sent me a novel via text message that says uh being as you asked for my more in-depth review of my feelings on the new doctor strange movie here it is i always liked the character in comics but going in i had my doubts as to whether or not they could pull him off i'm glad to say i was extremely happy and satisfied with the treatment of this character i don't know why that surprised me marvel hasn't turned out a bad movie yet i thought they seemed to take him through his sorcerer's training a little too fast though he went from barely being able to muster a spark to battling a supervillain to his standstill fully utilizing his powers in almost no time at all i think they could have spent a little more time developing this training his training and abilities That part was a little unbelievable and felt rushed, but not unforgivable. I understand that you can get away with a three-hour Cap or Avengers movie, but not Doctor Strange. The only other problem I had with it was I felt like they copped out a little on Dormammu. They handled him in sort of the same way that Rise of Silver Surfer handled Galactus. He was this huge non-corporeal entity, which is not how he is depicted in the comic at all. And by the way, I was a little disappointed that in your podcast, you guys hardly even touched on Dormammu at all. Anyway, other than that, I really loved and enjoyed the movie thoroughly and look forward to seeing his character in future Marvel movies and sequels, even though I don't really care for Bumper Car Cumberbatch. Thanks for asking for my opinion. Sincerely, Papa Thornton. Well, (laughs) Burkhar. That one got me for the through my entire day. Through my entire day. The Bumper Car Cumberbatch comment? Yes. Thank you, Papa Thornton, for writing in and giving us your your feedback on Doctor Strange. I am glad to see that you get to see these characters come to life on the screen. And you're right. Let's trust Marvel. So I'm I'm on board with him. Thanks, Papa Thornton. And and I I want to say that I very much I got I saw this uh, essentially uh, two and a half foot long text right come through like this gray box. How many harmonicas was the text message? This giant right. It was at least twenty harmonicas. Right. (laughs) So it was. I mean, it was a long text. I, I I start reading like I'm thinking oh he's got something serious to say so I, I start and then Doctor Strange I'm like oh I can't read I can't read I can't because I don't want to I haven't seen it yet so I I want to apologize because generally I'd want to engage in conversation and I can't and it's just been a crazy week so the next bit of follow up I wanted to have which we also had a little conversation on Facebook about was about YouTube Red uh, it's been a year since YouTube Red came out and that episode which haunts me to this day with the jokes I that these like, two make I feel like I've no. been looking stuff on, on YouTube Red for a long time not, not it hasn't like it's not just recent, I just right? saw a really interesting video no, about no. Uh, Hope no. I, I mean <laughs> she seemed like a real go getter <laughs> If you have no idea what the hell they're talking about, go check out the episode Sometimes We Go Lowbrow, which I believe is episode 30, uh, and you'll understand that joke. I don't know which which is sadder, Hope's current state of affairs, or the fact that you remember what episode number that is. So YouTube Red has been out for a year, and right now, uh, according to YouTube's numbers that they're starting to release, they have 1.5 million paid subscribers as of the late summer, uh, which may sound good, except that YouTube is gigantic and has like... 1 billion monthly users. How so many th- subscribers? 1.5 million. There's videos of guys getting hit hit in the nuts. Yeah. Have more than with, with more than 5 million subscribers. Yeah. So I reached out to, to people on Facebook and I said, hey, if, if you were someone that you know has YouTube read, tell us your thoughts about it. Uh, and we got uh, a couple of replies, but one of them was from uh, Craig Phillips, friend of the show, who is a diehard Android guy, uh, who says that he pays for Google Music, uh, which has YouTube read included with it. But he's never watched any of the Red exclusive content. He just used it to skip the ads. Uh, And none of the content really appealed to him. I even saw that if you buy the new Google Home, that they're giving you six months of YouTube Red uh, for free with that as well. 
Uh, and it's it's just really YouTube going, please, everybody, please, please, please. And then like they start like billing us. you without you remembering that you signed up <laughs> right. for it. Right. For stuff that you're really not interested in besides the fact that you skip ads. Oh, I hate that stuff. What a scam. And then uh, Brian Roman also replied to it, too. Uh, and he basically asked, listen, w- why? I'm already subscribed to a handful of streaming services. Uh, I'm I'm really not cutting the cable. If I want to watch YouTube, I'll sit through ads. I really I really don't care. And most of this stuff is just mildly entertaining that it's really not worth paying for anything. So And anything that's actually any good So what I'm finding is that any of the larger channels have either shut down or gone over to their own paid service because YouTube is screwing them on the money that they're getting from this. Like Geek and Sundry now has their own paid channel. Not through YouTube, you have to go, you know, sign up through their site. But a lot of a lot of content providers are doing that now. This totally backfired. And at the end of 2016, YouTube is going to be releasing 20 original series, uh, movies. And Nobody's they, watching that. Right, and they've even announced a series with uh, Dwayne Johnson and the director of Edge of Tomorrow. But again, no one – again, this was a service that has been free for over 10 years, and now you're asking people to pay for it. And I can't no, find anybody no, with the value. Well, I think that's the wrong angle. I don't have a problem – I don't have a problem with saying here's all this original content, pay for it, right? Right. Uh, it's it's, and I don't think that's, I think that's fine, right? But that's not the angle you're going for. So they they haven't really done original content before. That's a new thing, and I'm fine with charging people for that. What I'm not fine with is leveraging the no ads and 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 bundling it up, you know, like it's part of your normal mobile package, right? Like it's like this is expected. It's not. Right. And I can't tell if this is a function of YouTube as a company or if this is a larger Google thing. But I'm okay with the revenue stream. Uh, I just, you know, I, I don't I don't think you should package it as a free trial and because you know, you know you gotta give up a credit card or something for that free trial, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So you're gonna start charging people and six months. It's a great time frame. You know why? No one remembers you forget six it. months. To, to at least put some ray of light into YouTube, Brad, it is outgrowing. Right. Well, no, no, no. Before, and before you put anything else in there. So I think my big issue is that it's, it's six months free, right, YouTube Red, with Google Home, which is that voice command control thing like, like Amazon Echo, um, like Siri, right? But none of them really – ever have done anything right so google's hoping this is the thing now look apple users have had siri for a long time you've got anybody can use echo but when you have a google product that's going to essentially tie together your whole ecosystem you say to yourself i must have it there's a lot of people that have a bunch of google products right either you're an iphone person or an android person if you're an android person you have a bunch of products that work together this unifies your ecosystem, which is great. So a lot of people will buy it. And then six months later, they have 1.5 million subscribers right now, right? There's going to be bajillions of people that buy this thing. Millions and millions and millions, right? Well, yeah. If, if all they get from these people are three months, they can fund this thing forever. Well, they have YouTube Reddit 1.5 paying subscribers and 1 million of trial people. So, I mean, they have 2.5, but again, only 1 million. That's look, look, look there. I mean, you've seen, you've seen videos of sock puppets with 2.5 million hits. So it's not, this isn't a, like, look, that's a small number. And, and it's a, I think it's a brilliant marketing scheme. I just don't like it. So part of a, a little nerd translation, if I may, as to why this is not necessarily a, a terrible bit of news. These numbers aren't that bad. Is that this service is outpacing to per, outperform CBS All Access and uh, Dish uh, Dish's uh, Sling TV. It actually has is scaled to get more subscribers and more people paying for it than those two cord cutting solutions. So. It's it's good that YouTube is doing this. They just really need to to tap into it more, and they they really need to get it to grow. But I thought it was interesting. It's been out for a year. We talked about it when it was rumored. They, that that all changes when you know they put actually good content on there, and they don't have like all those other services have a bunch of stations, a bunch of channels. Right? This right. is this is their this own. Is, look, and I I commend them for it, especially signing a guy like Dwayne Johnson to do a show. But I'm not I. I 
I can't get what I need from it as a cord cutter. It's fundamentally, I, it's just not comprehensive, and I have a problem with that, right? It's just, it's just it's so one thing. It's just this one thing, and if I want to watch funny videos, that's where I go, right? But I don't go there for original content. Ever. All right, taking a break real quick from just some follow-up, I would like to take a quick moment, listener, and ask for your help. Uh, right now, we have a very quick 10-question survey on our website just about this show and this podcast. Uh, what can we do to make things better? What days do you listen? Just this way we can you know, focus together and make a better show for you. This is your podcast, and we want to be a, a voice for you, and we want to be a place that you can come to every week and have a little break from life. So if you could please go to thatkindofnerd.com, fill out our 10-question survey. It's completely anonymous. So there's no need for you know any kind of email address or any information. We're not gathering that. We just kind of want to know about the, the show itself. So please go to thatkindofnerd.com and take our survey. Come and knock on our door. <laughs> so let's talk about something that's utterly absurd. Uh, and uh, I believe Craig Phillips also brought this to our attention too. Apple is releasing a $300 book containing 450 photos of Apple products. Craig, Craig posted it on social media and actually didn't tag me. I was a little surprised, but 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 uh, I said, I, I "How many I sheep are going to buy this?" And I immediately commented, uh, "I must have one for every flat surface in my house." <laughs> How many? Is there a limit to the me- to the amount I can pre-order? Uh, and it's it's a joke, right? But every every single uh, architect has a portfolio, and I mean, John, J- Johnny Ive has been behind this for a long time, CJ, right? Yes, yes, yes. I'm just saying, every architect has a portfolio. This is an impressive line of products. I'm never paying money for a book. I'm just not. <laughs> it's, that's not what I do, right? But I can see it, businesses, it's, it's a status piece. Businesses put it as a centerpiece on their waiting room coffee table. Absolutely. You know, people with all kinds of disposable income. Absolutely. I got no, I have no problem with publishing it just as a, how much do you think it costs to publish something like that? Just on the gamble that people are going to spend three to four hundred fifty dollars on. Well, it goes uh, to one ninety nine for the smaller book, and then two ninety nine for the larger book. And yeah, I, I, I mean, I love Apple. I really do. I will never buy this book. Like this is crazy. It's one ninety nine. One ninety nine for the smaller version, and then for a, uh, it, it basically ten by twelve for one ninety nine, and then thirteen by sixteen for two ninety nine. See, I was imagining pretty much everybody who buys it buys both, and that's four fifty. I thought it was one fifty and three hundred. Why wouldn't you? I mean, why wouldn't you buy both? I I have an iPad Air and an iPad Mini. <laughs> I have I have an iPhone Seven, an iPhone Six. I got a MacBook Pro and a MacBook Air. Why Why wouldn't I do any of that stuff? I got both. <sighs> Uh, anyway, I would just like to say, as a person who is a fan of Apple, this is a step too far, and I will this this no no I'm sorry what, no no this. no nobody's asking you to spend your money on it CJ this look no 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 in the fact that the, everyone believes that oh you love Apple so much you're gonna buy this ridiculous book no like this is the technology equivalent of well if you like it so much why don't you marry it I'm <laughs> that's thinking, exactly right I'm thinking this thing probably generates. You know, a couple million bucks. I I don't doubt that it will. But that's are, all I'm saying. Are any of us ever going to buy this? Well, like, no, real people, man. Like, but, are real people going to buy this? But book? look, how much could it possibly cost to publish that book? Right? I mean, they don't. It's not like they need anybody to write. It's just pictures. Right? It's just it's a picture book. So it it couldn't possibly like you get you get a guy with like a decent photo printer when he just prints the thing, puts a bunch out there. You know, they paid you know, pennies on the dollar to make this thing and they're going to generate a couple million dollars of revenue. Why wouldn't you do that? Just sign, sign me up. I'm just going to wait for it to come to audible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at an iPhone three. If it's narrated by Morgan Freeman, even better. Check Holy out this crap. Apple watch with a blue leather band. It is supple <laughs> and the digital crown, which is useless goes. Wee. <laughs> I, I tell you what, if, if, uh, if Johnny Ive, the oh god! Thing, I would. Oh yeah, I'd pay for it. Listen, yeah. I would get YouTube Red to watch Johnny Ive describe every product. One I'd by get one. Red Tube to watch Johnny <laughs> Ive describe every product. If that helps anybody. <laughs> All right. So I just we need to acknowledge that because that's just it's just weird and nerdy, and we just had to bring that up. But now it is time to talk everything that has to deal with superheroes and using a lot of Brian's expertise, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for our favorite section. Cape Talk. 
Brian, the internet went a flurry with uh, a picture, really. So it says Young Justice, and it has the number three under it. And the internet went banana. Season three is coming of Young Justice. What is going on, and why do I care? Okay, so Young Justice is a cartoon premiered on Cartoon Network in 2010. And it is a cartoon that kind of focuses on exactly what the title is the the younger heroes of the dc universe so you have this like this teenage dc superheroes. right you have this team consists of robin aqualad miss martian super uh, superboy kid, kid flash. flash and artemis um and speedy and and, and speedy is in a couple episodes of it um and i i, I the, damn this show is so good i i, I can't I can't do the show any justice, <laughs> um, but honestly, this the show <laughs> did the show did a really really good job of kind of filling the void because this was like right after um, Teen, uh, Justice League Unlimited had ended a while ago. Teen Titans had just ended, and it did a really good job of kind of filling that void of a DC animated cartoon. But it, it went beyond that. Like, finally, there was a show that didn't focus on Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, and and they were kind of background characters to this this younger generation of heroes. And it was this team that Batman pretty much assigns like these clandestine like black ops missions for like just the justice league can't be involved in this stuff so let's let's send the, the kids into these really dangerous situ- situations and it the the show did such a good job of like overlapping these multiple storylines these really kind of mature themes like you know but be- dealing with betrayal and uh like addiction and things like that things that kids should not be watching so, that I was just going to ask that. Like this sounds Christian watched Teen Titans and watched, you know what I mean? I wouldn't so suggest this, this for Christian until he's like 13. Oh. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, it, it it's a it's a really serious show and it did it was so so good. So adults should be watching. Right. Like I love this show. In fact, I saw I was one of the people who saw that picture and I went all on Twitter without actually going on Twitter. I just went <laughs> freaking without nuts. going to that kind of nerd's Twitter account. Uh, no, God forbid. God forbid. I went. I, you I ever went tweet anything. media. I, can, I well, listen. I cannot describe my love and my excitement for the show returning in 140 characters or less. It just can't happen. But the show lasted two seasons, and the second season ended on a huge cliffhanger. So here's a little oh, thing. Okay. Here's a little thing you may not know about the way Cartoon Network kind of does their programming. They renew, they base their entire, like, line on whether or not they're going to renew a show or continue a show, not on how well the show is doing, because the show was doing pretty well. They base it on how many toys they're selling. And the toys were not selling, so they canned it. And everybody was so angry and so pissed, and I threw something. I remember throwing something. You know, you know what's interesting about that? What's that? It's, I mean, it just it reminded me of something, right? When so, for instance, right, they're measuring the number of toys, and if people would have gone out, like participated and purchased those toys, they would have had the show they wanted. <laughs> I didn't realize this. Until after it was right? canceled, but because they didn't go out and get those toys, <laughs> they don't get the show they wanted. I wonder, I Brian, I wonder if those people took to the streets or not. <laughs> so, so Brian, so long story short, here's what I'm asking. So everyone went crazy with this. Go check it out. How do I watch Young Justice? How do I even see if I'll like this? To be excited this about is a great season? question because I own both seasons because I'm me and. I'm not going to lend it to, you know, all of our fans. Um, but it is on Netflix. How rude of you. It is. It, all, both seasons are on Netflix. So honestly, watch the show on Netflix. See what I'm talking about and, and just enjoy it. it. It is a really well done story in about 48, maybe a little bit more, maybe 50, uh, half hour, or actually more like 20 minute episodes. Um, so it's not going to eat up a whole lot of your time either. And, I would just say wait till closer till season three is going to premiere because it ends on a cliffhanger. And unlike Alphas, this is actually coming back. So <laughs> you'll, you'll Alphas, and, I miss you so much. And, and CJ, I don't think I don't think Brian was being rude 
not lending out the DVD to all the fans. I don't think he was being. I think probably he was he was overlooking an opportunity. You could invite all the fans to your palatial estate. You know, you know what wouldn't be a problem is the ratio of cats to males. Oh. Especially when you add all of our listeners. Even? Oh, it would be very low. Oh. Very low, the ratio. You just let me walk right into it, Brian. I, I, I didn't walk right into it at all. You did. You opened yourself up. I, I didn't open myself up. By I'm not just lending here. your DVD. By not lending it to all your fans, you opened up I'm just sitting here talking about a you. show that I love, a show that is currently paused on my television right now because I was watching it before we started uh, you're just, recording. You're just a guy... You're just a guy sitting in front of another couple guys talking about a show that you love. So another bit of DC news also came out, and this one is in regards to the CW, which right now is like the DC network of television. On fire, the CW is. Uh, And there is going to be a crossover of Supergirl, The Flash, Arrow, and DC Legends of Tomorrow. Brian, how the hell do you get those shows together into one crossover event? I'm in trouble. Um, Really good writing, which they all have. Why are you in trouble? I'm in trouble. Why? Here's why. I am caught up on Flash and Arrow. I am almost caught up on Legends. I am nowhere near caught up on Supergirl. So here's the problem now. There are, right now, like in one week, there are going to be four episodes I can't watch, which means I can't watch anything subsequent until I'm caught up. Right. And I ju- like I just relaunched Prison Break. Right, we're wrapping up Stranger Things. I got that. So, like, I just I'm I'm in I'm in for real trouble because I'm so like I've been so busy at work. I can't get to all this stuff, and this is a priority. Like for me right now, Lethal Weapon, Arrow, Flash. That's what I'm watching. Right, and I, I I'm I'm actually waiting. Like I'm waiting for the show to start, and I'm watching it live. Lethal Weapon, at least. So. Josh, you are in serious trouble because it actually starts next week, the 28th. Uh, so you've got one week to wrap up Supergirl and, and get caught up with everything. I have to watch I got a, holiday a weekend. whole season I got a ho- of Arrow. I got a holiday weekend. I can make this work. Yes, you are. <laughs> I, I feel like you must go mobile with your Netflix streaming. Take it everywhere I go. You must, is what you, you must what take you. it everywhere you go, Joshua. What if CJ? Wait, CJ. I heard, I heard your most horrendous impression of me (laughs) on last week's episode. I was very offended. No idea what you're talking about. No, CJ. I do not want you running my podcast. (laughs) Thanks, man. Once Josh has called up on Supergirl, you have my permission to die. All right, so this event's going to start on November 28th. It's going to span across all the shows. Uh, Again, Supergirl, Flash, Arrow. So here's what you guys need to do, listeners. You need to to start watching these shows. I hear the Flash is very mobile. (laughs) He's very quick in going place to place. (laughs) I I opened this up myself by talking about DC, didn't I? Uh, Oh, yes, CJ. (laughs) I was wondering what would break first. <laughs> no, there's no need to know. Your there's podcast no to know. topic or Josh's Netflix account? <laughs> <laughs> and Josh, if you need to catch up on the newest episodes of Supergirl, they're on the uh, CW app as well for free. So go check those out. So listen, fellow nerds, go start watching these CW shows. They are fantastic. We highly recommend them. Uh, we're probably going to talk a little bit about this crossover as they happen. So this way you can kind of be in the loop to know what's going on with it. And Brian will share his lovely opinions being the comic book nerd that he is. Can I, can I share my opinions on the crossover right now? Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. It's going to be awesome. A. Uh, B, it's actually, if I'm reading everything correctly, it's based on an old 90s huge DC crossover that happened, oh, you know, forever ago. Uh, definitely drawn by Todd McFarlane, not written by him. Uh, like the aliens are fighting it is these like the world. Oh, what the hell were they called? The world changers or eaters, something like that. Here, here, here's here's my theory. Just in general, this crossover is how they bring the Supergirl world into Flowerverse. Oh, okay. This that that's something's gonna happen because these aliens like play with multiple Earths, like, you know, like the marbles at the end of Men in Black. Like, that's what they do. And I think somehow, like, at the end of this crossover, Supergirl will exist in the same universe as everything else. That makes sense. That'd be a good way to do it. 
All right, so please go check out the CW shows. They are fantastic. It's one part of DC that I'm not taking a shit on. I love them a lot. I even caught up with all the season one of Supergirl, and I started season two, and that show is definitely worth it. And Brian, you're right. I absolutely love the actress who plays who plays oh, Supergirl. Gee. She's so good. TJ, she nails you, it. Can you just rewind? Repeat what you said just one more time. <laughs> Brian, you were absolutely right. Uh, I love yeah. the actress. Brian, you were absolutely right. Brian, you were absolutely right. It. Brian, you were it. absolutely just right. Keep, keep doing it. <laughs> I'm going to go to bed. Just you keep saying that. All right. And that's all that we have for this week's Cape Talk. Cape Talk. All right. So uh, a couple weeks ago, we had talked about the Nintendo Switch, which is going to be Nintendo's new flagship console coming out in March. In March. In March of uh, 2017. March is a huge month for things, by the way. <laughs> Don't even start, man. I'm going to be well, so broke. Well, I'm going to so have many movies. What's happening in March? Like everything. Can you run it down? Because I, I honestly, I'm, there, I'm oblivious. There is a ton of movies coming out in March of 2017. So, so yeah. So March, um, just in the world of movies. I mean, we we've already talked about Logan, uh, coming out. Transporting two comes out in March. Kong Skull Island comes out in March. The Beauty and the Beast, uh, with Emma Watson. Uh, King Arthur, Power Rangers, uh, Ghost of the Shell. Just a Jeez. crap ton of stuff. Plus, the, you know, the Nintendo Switch and some other product launch comes out then, and I don't even remember what one it is. Uh, but here's a problem. There's a glitch with the Nintendo Switch dropping in March, and that is that Zelda Breath of the Wind will miss the Switch launch. It's been There's slated now. There's a glitch now. in the Switch? There's a glitch in the Switch, and the Breath of the Wind has been simply slated as 2017, but not going to be available when Nintendo Switch gets... Uh, you know, released, which maybe means like the new Mario game will be ready. But like, what is going to be the game that makes everyone buy this console? What, why? Why? Why are? Why is everyone going to rush in March to go pick this up? If I don't, we know. don't have Zelda. The, how do you? How do you? Wait, 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 wait. How do you rush in March? Is it a like a thing you learn to do when you're MK Ultra? <laughs> <laughs> How do you? Listen, is there like a really special? Funny. Is there's a special Russian march yeah. that you do that no one else does? Very truly, yes, Kumar. People rush to Russian march. I was always told to uh, beware the Ides of March, so I don't. I don't know how that works. I don't. I don't know. I. I, I don't get it because this is the same thing that the Wii U suffered from. Like Wii U right. didn't have any launch titles, and now they're just going to do it again with the Nintendo Switch. Listen, it, it, my, my opinion, if Breath of the Wild isn't ready, then they should just delay the entire product launch. Yeah, this That's is like a Twilight opinion. Princess, right? Twilight Princess was initially going to be for the GameCube, but then it didn't come out until the launch of the Wii. No, no, false. It did come out on the GameCube and also came out on the Wii U. Right, but it was initially just sorry, supposed the to be Game. It was supposed to be a game GameCube game first and then got developed for the Wii. And yeah, I mean, it. I'm okay so with they, them So they showed it and the then game. they waited and delayed. I'm okay with them delaying a game, but like if you're going to release a system, you need to have a big tentpole title and to tie it to, to sell bundles with to, for all of that crap. And I don't I don't know what else they're going to be able to launch this with that will be like, I, I, honestly, like I want to buy a Switch, but I'm not buying Nintendo Land again. Like, I don't care. I, I want a legitimate game. So the reason they're saying this is going to take it four to six months of testing to follow. And this is a huge departure from uh, any other Zelda game ever because it's going to be an open world game. So, I mean, it's not going to be just a you know, very fixed point, entirely open world. Uh, which, I mean, they've never really done before. I mean, maybe you can say um, Ocarina of Time, but not really. Yeah, I mean, you can stretch it, but uh, anyway, it depends I, on how you define open world, right? It's true, but but you're right. I mean, you need this game, honestly, Nintendo. You need this game to launch your console. Yes, I'm Nintendo, okay listen you. to us. We're three <laughs> Yahoos who knows all sorts of things. No, I thought we were Doty. No, 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 we're two, two Yahoos, Yahoos and a Doty. I I'm, I apologize. That's right. You get lost in a sea of green for a week on Ocarina of Time. So I don't like. I don't even want to open world. That was frustrating. That game was frustrating. Yeah, I mean, I I'm sure they d- they're doing a better job with it, but we don't know because it won't be coming out in March. So it's not coming out in March, and again, another reason to hold off on buying the Switch right away, uh, and maybe waiting for the second model, which because it's probably going to be out second gen come out, and you'll probably get Zelda as a bundle pack. But how will I, will I go to my rooftop loft party? <laughs> And how will you games? party with millennials while you play uh, Mario Go Kart? More importantly, which, which, how will I play games while on the toilet? 
Because <laughs> that is what everyone is going to use You're it You're going to buy a DS and just use it. I have way. a DS. I don't play it on well, the What's Twitter going to have to do with her Nintendo? Anyway. Just thought that everyone should know you may want to put that money that you're uh, stashing away for your Switch aside for a little bit and wait for Zelda to come out with it. So sorry to be that guy who tells you terrible news, but you need to know. You're not sorry. You're always that guy. I'm not that guy. You're always that guy. <laughs> I would like to t- talk for a moment about this terrible, horrific piece of crap app that came out into the world, which I know some people are very excited about. McDonald's has made a McRib tracker. So first, can we talk about the damn McRib well, like on purpose? Yeah. Somebody made that on purpose. So, uh, McDon- they hired someone to make a McRib Finder app on purpose. And he made millions of people do, happy. Do, do you know what's... Bro, that's gross. Do you know what's terrible about this app? Are you ready? You download it, and there's no app on your home screen whatsoever. None. Where is it? None at all. Do you know where it is? It's in iMessages. Do I get to message so you, where McRib so starts with open, my friends? Yes. That's oh, exactly wait, wait, it. All right. All right. So it's, it's a messaging app. app. In the, it's an app in the messages store. It's not in the app store. Not, well, it is in the app store. You can download it in the app yeah, store. Yeah, well, all, no, the, no, all no. the messages it's, are in, in the it's app in store. The, it's in the messages app store. No, you can go to the actual app store. Because right, that's how I found it. it. it right, I get it. But I'm saying it's it's primarily only functional in messages, right? Yes. So, like, right now, I just sent you guys what it actually is. There's a map on it where you can find it. And then you get a text message, right? You can send it to people, and it says, the McRib is back. Let's meet up. And then it gives you the address of where it is crazy because the reviews on this are so terrible because it's only on the messages platform and there's like zero instructions there's zero in the details about that it's exclusive to this it's just pissing everybody off uh but you know what if you like the mcrib so much um you know you have bigger issues to to, to solve the, besides uh, how to use an app the mcrib I, and i don't i don't recall exactly when this uh abomination debuted uh but i do remember that it <laughs> that the Simpsons satirized it at Krusty Burger right. with the Whatchamacarcus sandwich. That's what it was called on The Simpsons. The Whatchamacarcus. Because the thing, look, it, it doesn't have bones in it, but it looks like it has bones in it. So <laughs> it's just pressed. It's just it's meat junk pressed into a mold. Why would people eat this thing? That It just, you know, it shouldn't be McRib. It should be McMortian. Rhymes with Schmishmortian. <laughs> I don't even know what else. Like, it's just gross. It's gross to look. It's gross to think about. The Why did you eat that? The McMeat. It should just be called the McMeat. And I know people. I know specifically one guy that seeks these things out. Yes. And I can't, I can't imagine or understand why. So here's my favorite app review uh, for this. It was a one star. Uh, it says, how do you use this? Step one, go to the Apple text messages, pull it up in stickers, click the McRib sticker, sticker, and then you can send it. You're welcome. It's poorly done. Screw you, McDonald's. Just outrage. Outrage. A whole bunch of people. Brian, you're awfully quiet on this, and I think I just got a text message. I'm you trying to find out where the nearest McRib is to me. That we should go to Strasburg <laughs> and go. Wait, wait, are you are, are you saying you're a McRib eater? I, uh, I, I, I am. The oh, my eater. God, he is. I love the McRib. Oh, oh my God. God! You don't. It is happiness Brian. in a Brian. sandwich, Joshua. Brian, <laughs> Brian, look, I, I get, I like, like pulled pork, pickled onions. I get it, right? I, I understand, but this is neither of those things. Right? You're right. You're right. Gross. It's not. It's not pulled so, pork or or listen, onions or barbecue. You know what it is? Happiness. It's lips and assholes. Bun. It's lips and assholes ground up, hey, pressed into a mold to look like it hey, has listen, ribs. This sounds a lot like the YouTube rep. Listen, Hope told me <laughs> that that's okay. <laughs> look, it sounds look, sounds great to me. Look, I, Brian, I can take like I'll take you. We'll go back to grain. We'll get you a pork belly taco. It'll be good. God, I like those chicken and waffles. It'll man. be it'll be delicious, and you know you may live longer having eaten that instead. Please, Brian, don't eat any more McRibs. So did I make your day by showing you this app? I, I downloaded it, didn't I? Oh, my God. Although it is a little, little cumbersome to use. But I do, yeah. I do, I do kind of want a McRib now. Jalesburg is so far. I actually have serious concerns <laughs> at the moment. I, I don't know if we can continue to do a podcast. You know, you know what I remember eater. about the McRib? I remember them bringing the McRib back for when the uh, John Goodman Flintstones movie came out. And it came in this little like 
cardboard box that you could turn into the Flintstones like car or house or something. And it was awesome. And more importantly, McRib. I, no, no, I, I can't, I can't believe off. Brian's a McRib I eater. I, I mean, I've taken. You, how long you, have you been you, hiding you, this secret you, from you me? Brian, how many different like decent restaurants have we gone to together? It's been, oh, yeah, it's they're been all quite amazing. A, they're all amazing. Yeah, right? And he wishes and he could have time, a McRib every instead time of every good meal. We sit down together, and and you you just say, you know what, Josh, just handle it, and I do. Right, right. But Josh, when I'm at Why? McDonald's, you're not there to handle it, so I go for well, the McRib. I'm saying, just don't go to McDonald's. Think about places. I want you to do this every time you think about McDonald's. Just I want you to picture my face. Okay, my face going, Ugh, just gr- you know, making the grossest possible disgusting disdainful face you can imagine but then i'll be sad while eating my mcrib <laughs> i'm still getting the mcrib I- i'm sorry josh unless you're there to stop me i'm still getting oh, it oh man now you've just made me sad while eating the mcrib i need you to just be a grown-up and not eat a mcrib you you mean That's you mean mcribs and hot pockets are not a good diet if you if you feel like Brian has lessened his value, you can go to thatkindofnerd.com, take our survey, and tell Brian to never eat I'm, a McRib I'm again. Coming, listen, listen, and I got to work this out <laughs> with actually with my wife. I got to figure out a weekend where I'm just I'm gonna come to Horsham, uh, and I'm gonna take you shopping, and we're gonna prepare, and it's not gonna be like two hours on a Sunday morning before football. I'm coming on Saturday. I'm 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 gonna get a room at the courtyard right there in Horsham. I'm staying Saturday night, right? Because we're gonna cook all the food together and prepare you a week of meals. A week of meals. And you're gonna see how easy it is, and you're gonna not ever eat a goddamn McRib sandwich ever. Papa Thornton, <laughs> if you care about your son, Papa Thornton, if you care about your son's well-being, you will you will back me up. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna do the thing where I take Brian shopping either way because it has to happen, but I need you to add a layer of disapproval on the McRib. This is too much. Does your daddy it's, McRibs? I, it's a bridge too far. I've learned so much in this episode. I, I learned that Brian is so excited for Young Justice. So uh, excited. I learned that Papa you know Thornton, what? When season three premieres, I'm just gonna be eating it, eating a McRib while watching. I learned it. that Papa Thornton <laughs> McRibs it loved everywhere. Doctor Strange. That uh, YouTube Red is not making really any money. The Apple Book is outrageous, and Brian eats McRibs. I'm a, More I'm a importantly, little, I'm a I hurt. can't read that Apple Book while eating a McRib because it, it's all white. Get all right. sorts of sauce all over it, or I could slop. You're all your slop. <laughs> would you get Would you get a book full of McRibs and like how they've evolved in the boxes form and paid two hundred dollars for that? I think no, you would. No, not two hundred. Yeah, you see the boxes that the, the, the McRib is coming and they evolve slow, it. Slow your roll there. The McRib is five bucks. I'll, I'll pay twenty for the book, not not two hundred. Makes no sense. Don't McDonald's pork, pork will totally make that taco, fucking book. Nine dollars. Two pork belly tacos. That'd be amazing. <laughs> nine dollars. Wow. Well, we've all learned a lot. And I, uh, I feel like I've grown as a as a I, human being. I, I, I feel like a lot of people just thought less of you. I don't really know what else to tell you, buddy. <laughs> I think I just moved up one spot. I think it goes Josh, me, then you now. That, thank you. I should all, thank it's you. It's all good. No, I'm used to it. It's fine. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all that we have for the nerdy news this week. Oh, really? I can't We're going to end you. on the McRib? I'm going to end on the McRib. How do you top the McRib? I don't know. I, you know how you top the McRib? I'm driving no, up to don't. Stroudsburg and getting a fucking McRib. all right well that's all that we have for the nerdy news this week Uh, i want to thank you so much for listening to us and making us your walk around the neighborhood or your drive to work please i urge you to check out our other podcast hey did you see we are going to wrap up stranger things next week so check out episode seven the bath uh this week dropping on wednesday thank you so much again for listening to our show thank you josh and brian for joining me this episode i'm gonna eat a mcrib while taking the bath (laughs) while watching stranger things Oh, it's so great. I can just imagine someone sad crying in a bath <laughs> eating that junk. <laughs> just, just, just crying gross tears all over themselves. Barbecue gross tears. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening, and we will see you guys next week. It's a picture book. I, I tell you what, if if uh, if Johnny Ive did the whole thing, I'd get Red Tube to watch Johnny Ive describe every product. If that helps anybody.